sea gray cookies that's a pretty rough designation <laughs> they don't kind of start out with the uh with the choicest cuts <laughs> for talk food we are live oh, yeah oh, okay. i did not get a notice i am i did too the notice it's legit it oh. is mutants and masterminds monday we are going to give folks some time to sort of join us oh. and uh as we ramp Hi, up uh say hello yeah hello everybody um my name is troy and i get to hang out every monday well nearly every monday with my two <laughs> favorite monday pals we've got crystal frazier hi and steve kenson hey everybody and today we're talking creating or uh, crafting adventures right i'm is, mm -hmm. crystal tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this and um and what we're going to cover uh well we're going to talk about uh, because Mutants and Masterminds is pretty different than a lot of other like D20 and adventure oriented uh, game systems. It can be kind of challenging to put together adventures that don't just feel like a bunch of slugfests between people in funny shorts. So we're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about mine and Steve's favorite tricks for making adventures feel real and organic and bringing in fun elements from your players and your home group and your favorite villains. Awesome. Well, as speaking of our favorite mm -hmm. villains, everybody's joining us. We've got the usual crew. They're hanging out. Jacob's here. Jay Gray, just right out of the gate. Uh -huh. Blinks like the link wizard that he is. Um, here we go. Speaking of Randall's our favorite here. villains. Oh, look. I have asked the insidious Professor Adamant to join us today. A very special guest. She is, as you can see, trying to perform a heist of the cookies. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Steve, oh, hey, Jonesy says hello. Um, uh, we've also got Sean Vieira's here. Is and it? oh, we have Freedom City dropped on Fantasy Grounds as well, says Sean oh, Vieira. Yes. Yeah. That is phenomenal information. Um, and so, yeah, so we've got a lot of stuff going on, um, folks. Uh, we're also, don't let me forget, we've got to pick a winner from our um, uh, superhero or super noise fight. Uh, we'll do that before the before the hour is up. Uh, but if you've got questions, friends, do leave them in the chat and I will get to them or I'll pretend like I'll get to them and we'll just ignore them or we'll answer them and lie. So many options. Anyway, I'll turn it over to you, friends, as I sort of uh, read the chat and connect with our fans. I miss these guys. So adventures. So yes, adventures. Uh, fans of Mutants and Masterminds will notice that uh, since 2020 began, uh, one of the few highlights is that we've started publishing monthly adventures because, you know, again, the system can be a little challenging to come up with your own adventures for uh, just because there's there is so many, there are so many different things you can do mm -hmm. as a hero and as a villain that if an adventure isn't really built to to your players, it can feel a little uh, too difficult or too easy or just entirely off tone. So I don't know. Do we wanna whoop? Do we wanna start a little <laughs> talking a little bit about the first couple of adventures we did for Mutants and Masterminds back in? Sure. Uh, first edition, second edition. Yeah, no, just, we can just do a, that. Real, real quick, um, I just want to interject, or we could just sit here and look at that pupper, that <laughs> cute baby pupper face. <laughs> uh, I wanted to say real fast, hello, um, uh, John. Hello, John. Hello, Alex. Um, we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and I will cork it. It being me. <laughs> I mean, the very first published adventure for mutants and masterminds was kind of atypical in that it went right to saving not only the universe but saving like the entire omniverse from yeah. destruction pretty the, much the very first was in the the first edition book itself wasn't it fight a break that's Watch true freedom league that's true which was really more of like an individual scene than a whole adventure. Than a whole adventure as such, yeah. It was sort of a taster more than anything. Yeah, but then the very second, or the first separately published was, uh, I keep wanting to say crisis on oh, time infinite of crisis. Earth, but it's time of crisis. Mm -hmm. yep. Crisis, war, secrets, <laughs> infinity. Exactly. 
where you go right from, you know, stopping a, uh, you know, casino heist to saving all of known creation. (laughs) And unknown creation. Uh, But yeah, I mean, that one tended to be a pretty quick jump between like set pieces where you'd have different slug ups with, you know, super powered apes or super Nazis or things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then again, uh, Time of Vengeance after that was again, a like a series of Mm -hmm. slugfests against new villains. and it wasn't really until we started doing like yep. the holiday themed adventures where you started getting like the idea of doing weird little role playing scenes with like Santa Claus's elves and suggestions mm-hmm. for how to adapt adapt the adventures based on your team's uh, makeup and powers. You know, speaking of an ad- adaptation, um, we've got some friends here. Uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty passionate about the notion of a third edition update for um do 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 sorry a uh, uh, crisis of super secret sacred wars time of crisis yeah uh, we haven't really talked about it um just because the adventure has been out there for so long uh, yeah. in so many regards that i think we've just been looking to do we've been rolling out so many new adventures so far yeah. as that goes uh and time has sort of moved on in the freedom city setting oh fair point yeah interesting um, interesting. Uh, uh, so fans um, uh, will take that under advisement for sure. Um, hmm. Sean says, uh, "Time of mostly. Crisis sold me on the great possibilities of the Freedom City setting." And cool. Most of the That's encounters are pretty easy to update to third edition. So. That's true. And the the adventure structure itself, we wouldn't really change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, so do we want to talk about the basics of building out an adventure and then we will get into mm-hmm. some of the differences between like what we do writing adventures as broadly mm-hmm. as we can versus what everybody else can do building yeah. their adventures at home sure Sounds so good. love it so yeah uh i mean the basic process for adventures either way is kind of coming up with your high concept like what what's changing the status quo or what needs to change in the status quo that your heroes Mm -hmm. are going to get involved with. And usually that involves figuring out who your villains are, like the nefarious Professor Adamant. Ah. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. Who is very clingy today. Yeah. It should also be noted that, you know, generally speaking, we're here, uh, Crystal and I are on the... um, west coast and we are basically just hanging out in a haze of it just smells like a, a literal fire. haze yeah it's a yeah. literal haze so. doped up on a mix of low oxygen and allergy pills <laughs> yeah same that's why i also have uh, this gravelly tone to my voice mm-hmm. so yeah. oh, i thought you were just trying to be sexier i i was yeah i was but it, it's just upsetting i guess uh, <laughs> <laughs> only to dogs and others with so, sensitivities to high-pitched noises <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, so, you know, the starting point with a lot of, of superhero adventures is just that. It's the villain and their schemes. Yeah. Whereas for a lot of, whereas for other kinds of adventures, oftentimes the focus or the starting point will be on a particular location, mm-hmm. uh, like exploring a dungeon or um, visiting a planet uh, or the like. Um, yeah. So it's it's very um, you know sort of agenda driven. Yeah, it's in in most adventures your your main characters your PCs tend to be very proactive. Like we want to explore this dungeon. We want to investigate the town council because they were mean to us. We want to <laughs> uh, you know we want to hunt this mythical ultra corn. Uh, but in superhero adventures, most of the time the heroes are agents of the status quo or at least agents of like relative peace for people. So they end up being very reactive and you as Mm -hmm. the game master have to figure out what they need to react to. So a lot of time that's figuring out a a great villain to go with or picking some kind of disaster that's going to be a a backdrop that other characters take advantage of. Like Mm -hmm. you could have an adventure that is all about a giant, for example, series of hurricanes is hurtling towards the city and 
the heroes have to evacuate and help secure it and stop villains who are trying to take advantage of the chaos, things mm-hmm. like that. So you're, you're not just limited to picking out a villain and then having the heroes fight them. So one of the things, because we talked about how that, you know, sort of introductory scenario was basically just like a scene because it's basically just one combat, essentially. And I think one of the, oftentimes one of the challenges of planning out a superhero adventure is uh, spinning out the the scenes and the encounters Mm -hmm. so that it isn't just the villain shows up, you fight them, end of story. Yeah. I mean, in the comic books, there's almost always more going on. Uh, And I think, well, I mean, a lot of what you have to do is different from comic books because Mm -hmm. there's, being a role-playing game, there's a lot of heavy emphasis on on always winning every encounter, which isn't really necessary in Mutants and Masterminds. We can talk about that Mm -hmm. later when we talk about balancing encounters, but you, you really need to escalate slowly to whoever the cause of everything is. So you mm-hmm. need to fight a bunch of goons or you need to shake down you know, local criminals and li- find out what's going on. Or you need to fight the lieutenants that they've sent to secure the ultra magnifier. <laughs> Remember in first edition when we had a random table of yes, super tech gadgets? Been- the random device tape name table. Yes. yes. We should bring that back. We should, yeah. <laughs> All right. Next reprint of the Deluxe Game Master's Guide. Um, I, but yeah, I mean, there's, and there are definitely story structures that, mm-hmm. that kind of step through those kinds of encounters. I mean, uh, Time of Crisis was the classic sort of MacGuffin hunt mm-hmm. story of there are these devices and you have to sequentially one by one go through and disarm them. And there are you know, sort of encounters around that, making that whole process difficult. But you, know, you, you have a clear sequence of you're gonna do this, 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 and this. Yeah, you know, Andrew, Chris, I have a question for you real quick. As in the creation of the, uh, uh, when you're sitting down to, and we're speaking both of like, people who may want to do adventures of their own, but then, but really about how it's done behind the curtain, right? Uh, uh, Yeah. So when it comes to pacing, how do you, that's just an interesting concept in, in this sort of process, like sort of the, the beats or rhythms of how a story unfolds. Um, How do you kind of wrap your mind around that? Uh, I mean, a lot of it is just figuring out the natural progression. What's mm-hmm. like, what's going on behind the scenes, and then how do you feed that information to anybody who starts investigating? Gotcha. Uh, and as far as as far as pacing goes, I mean, it's not universal, but I like to break up every combat or conflict encounter with a challenge sequence or an opportunity to role play or something like that. It's not strictly necessary because in Mutants and Masterminds, you usually bounce back from your injuries, you know, in a couple of minutes to a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. So, I got gotcha. you. That's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. What was that, Steve? Sorry. <laughs> not a lot of long rests needed to, you know, be built in. Which was actually a real relief when I kind of figured that part out. Having, you know, in a particular, you know, uh, combat was kind of got my ass handed to me but and it was a little tense about okay now now i got to figure out how i'm going to heal um Mm -hmm. but it's sort of you you do definitely want to be careful but you know there are it's uh it's friendly in that regard it's not that punishing Mm -hmm. yeah that's great um david um says uh bring back all the random generators (laughs) i'm a big fan of of random generators you might have you might have noticed a couple extra of those ended up in the uh deluxe gm's guide and the reprint Mm mm-hmm I love it. Yeah. Thanks for answering the the pacing question. Just really fascinating. Just philosophically, how do you kind of, how you kind of figure that stuff out? But uh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, And then, I mean, when it comes to building your own adventures versus building canned adventures, uh, and we at Green Ronin making adventures for everyone kind of have to make them intentionally generic, something that you Mm -hmm. you can easily adapt. Uh, So we'll, we try to fill in as much information as we can about like who the villains are and what their motivations are. And every adventure we publish has a little section talking about like, well, these problem or powers might cause a problem, but here's how you can mitigate it or work with it without making the player feel like they wasted their power points. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, and, we, and we try to offer ways that you can sort of customize um, and say, hey, if you have this type of character in your group, this is a good opportunity for them to shine in this particular scene or things like that. But beyond that, it's hard because to, you, you can't know what the makeup of the group is going to be like. Yeah, and I, I mean, the one of the great things about running your home game is you know, I will suggest, well, this is a great scene for one of your players' complications to come up, like a loved mm -hmm. one is in the bank when it's robbed, or, you know, the, the hero is in their secret identity in the mayor's office when the ultra megaloid attacks. Uh, <laughs> I'm really on the world word ultra today. Yeah, <laughs> mega ultra ultra. Uh, but I mean, you as the GM know like exactly who your your heroes' secret identities are, who they're mm -hmm. dating, who their kids are, you know, who their rivals are. You can, you know, if there's a villain they really hate and it's their complication, you can just bring that villain in again and again and again. Whereas and for published adventures, we like to kind of rotate through as many different villains as we can because there's a lot of cool lot of and masterminds villains. You know, uh, Jacob brings up something, um, and uh, I, I bring it up both to say, sorry, Jacob, I called you David for some reason, but mm -hmm. that's just sort of my shtick, so, um, you know, uh, enjoy. But uh, uh, Jacob says, ultimately, my issue with creating adventures is how do the heroes find out? Because mm -hmm. the villains want to keep their plans secret for as long as possible, depending on the villainy, I presume. But that's an interesting mm -hmm. question, and it sort of snagged sure. my mind a bit. What do you two think about that? Uh, well, I mean, the important thing, if you like mysteries like that, uh, reading some mystery novels or at least some blogs about how to uh. write mystery novels helps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written mystery stories. thing you always have to remember is every step somebody takes to cover up what they've done leaves more clues than before and it might mean mm -hmm. there are extra steps yeah. between starting your investigation and the final destination but there will always be points points mm -hmm. along the path yep. so and there's occasionally room i mean although the classic adventure approach is is that you know, the villain's plan is foreshadowed in some way mm -hmm. to the heroes. You can occasionally, for a change of pace, do an adventure where that's not the case. You know, I did a um, time travel adventure once where basically the villain's plan had already succeeded and the heroes basically just woke up in an alternate universe because history had been changed. And the, the whole point of the adventure was figuring out why they had this weird sense that there was something wrong with the world. Um, and, uh, you know, it was really undoing the villain's plan that had already succeeded. Yeah. And I mean, for, for adventures where you're leading up to some big scheme of the villains, think about mm -hmm. what resources they need and how they go about getting them. Uh, or think about what small steps they're taking to, to test their doomsday device or get their yeah. ultimate revenge. Like nobody just jumps immediately from being struck by lightning to wiping out the company that fired them, who they blame for their, you know, right. all of their losses. So at some point along the way, they're going to try and recruit a, a couple other villains. They're going to try and steal information about how the company is vulnerable. They're mm -hmm. going to be testing out their powers to see what they can do. And so the players the might get- Resources. Mm -hmm. They might be, they might just hold up, you know, hold up a bank for resources, or they might try embezzling, which mm -hmm. doesn't bring them on a superhero's radar very often. But when the DA investigating that embezzling is electrocuted in the middle of the night, that might, you know, raise some eyebrows. So I have a yeah, 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 so to speak. I have a question for <laughs> um, uh, for the room, actually, for the for our chat friends. Uh, DT Sketch Pacino brings up um, the need uh, or what would be interesting to see some downtime rules for mutants and masterminds. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they're used in Pathfinder and they're used in D and D fifth edition. It could be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I mean, I like systems that make crunchy little things you can play with, but I also like leaving enough room mm -hmm. for, for players to kind of dictate like, Oh, well, I'm going to my daughter's high school play. And yeah. you know, Am I losing out on mm -hmm. mechanical benefits by yeah. doing that story-oriented thing instead of uh, 
working on my, you know, target practice, which generates more XP for me. Interesting. So yeah, mm -hmm. not yeah. making rules, giving the the character yeah. of the player a chance to sort of act within the confines of their character and not necessarily dictate yep. what that means to them. That makes stories yeah. more interesting. I love it. Um, Randall, I, yeah. oh, go ahead. Sorry, do, Crystal. Oh, I do really like using like the challenge sequence rules to mm -hmm. build like complicated processes that players want to do in their downtime. Like I want to build a dimension hopping car. Well, right. that's not something you're going to do like in one adventure, unless it's like a high weirdness style game. So we'll put together a challenge sequence and all of your downtime scenes, you can choose to make a roll. And when you get X successes or X degrees mm -hmm. of success, now you have a, a cross time roadster. I yeah. love that. I literally am just staring at the screen with my mouth wide open, just thinking, wow, that's brilliant. Um, yeah. I, I love well, that. Go ahead. One of the, one of the things it's, it's kind of hard to create space in published adventures yeah. for a lot of the personal stuff because it's so personal um you know there there are occasionally good opportunities and you'll you'll see we talk about it in danger zones a lot because it's mm -hmm. location based we can say things like hey the amusement park location is a great opportunity to just do a story where the characters are all out at an amusement park yeah. and then, oh it's down fun you know, time yeah 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 and it's downtime it's fun time and maybe something happens uh, but but at least part of the story is about just the characters, what the characters do at an amusement park. Yeah. What, you know, so what do you do when, goes. you know, a small child is separated from their parents and crying? And, you know, does your, your hero with growth powers use them to get on the roller coaster, even though they're really not supposed to? Or... Right. That's yeah. fascinating. I, I love that notion too, that it also given, you know, given that, everybody's come together, you know, in, in meat space, I'll say, uh, to, to role play this, uh, mm -hmm. interacting with each other as the characters also really builds a foundation for future, you know, sort of adventure. Um, that's, mm, absolutely. that's, that's yeah. great. The, um, the we've got a lot of and Go weird little stories you build are some of my favorite parts of role playing. Yeah. yeah. And, and arguably the, the stuff that is the, that makes it so vital and so fun. I, yeah, I, I really I, enjoy that. I'm, um, I'm, I, I, I shouldn't do this, but I've got a my character story that actually is my oh, wife's go for character it. story. Yeah, do it, do it. I want to hear it. Uh, so we were we were playing a, a campaign where it's all about intrigue and doing you know political sneaky things, and she's the players have to break into the like this big fancy nobleman's ball, infiltrate mm -hmm. it, and do like an extraction for the nobleman's gay son who's be basically being sent to magic conversion therapy the next day oh and like my wife's character is just like yeah i don't really care about like all these noble shenanigans and it seems like all the other characters have this covered better than me i'm not situated to be like a sneaky politicky type at all but the second I said, oh, and the catering's being managed by that girl who was mean to you in private school. She's like, no, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. There's some really great ideas um, uh, boiling up in, uh, in the conversation. I think it seems to me like everybody has spent quality time trying to figure out how information gets disseminated and mm -hmm. what mechanism, if it's a, you know, we've got people who are saying, uh, Jason Childs talks about it, a minion that likes to uh, brag about oh, what they're yes. working mm -hmm. on. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Never, never underestimate the ability for villains to backstab each other. Oh, oh God, certainly. Yes. Or uh, yeah, minions or, to blow off steam in crappy right. little bars. Yeah, yeah. Or try to be bigger. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm uh, important. I'm doing. You know, I'm working on the death ray. Like, I mean, oops. I don't know. Yep. Steve, let me let me pick your mind. Let's say the insidious Doctor Adamant is building <laughs> a cookie magnet to steal mm -hmm. all the cookies in Freedom City. What? How did how do the heroes find out about this plot? Well, what's she gonna need to build that cookie magnet? Obviously, you know, there's going to have to be a, uh, you know, gathering of the necessary components. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a test to make sure that it works. Like uh, some, some sort there, of small scale cookie right? extraction. That small scale cookie extraction. There might even be the need to, to kidnap a particular expert in oh, okay. cookie magnetization. Oh. You know, who's, who's revolutionized that field. <laughs> 
you know, has that key element to make the device work. Oh yeah. I mean, she's not an expert in cookie magnetics. She's, she's more of a general she, purpose. She's more of an yeah. ideas, uh, an ideas dog. Yeah, big know. ideas dog. <laughs> I mean, she, she's the smartest corgi in Freedom City, but that's not saying a lot. Right. <laughs> she's the cutest. But yeah, and also I would imagine too that the, um, <laughs> God, that's why you wouldn't suspect that there was some, you know, mm -hmm. cookie. No. Cookie. Oh, yeah. Never. <laughs> Keep petting. Um, but yeah, yeah, just so, so sweet. Um, uh, the minion cookie monster is overheard chatting about all the cookies he's about to come into. Okay, yes, yeah. There, people are really taking this in directions. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think you're going to have to face a cookie monster at some point that was, you know, mm -hmm. the result of a failed cookie magnet test. Right. Oh, yeah. The power of cookie. You just didn't realize. Yes. When it pulls all those cookies together and gives them pseudo life. I mean, what are you going to do then? Yeah, that's yeah. why we had to remove the AI from the cookie magnet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, great. Uh, great conversation going on in chat. And uh, folks, remember too, um, I, sometimes I save some of your questions towards the end, but uh, Jonesy, do me a favor. Would you uh, elaborate on your question? I didn't quite track and um, sometimes you know, I'm simple and easily confused. And so um, uh, help, help me help you help uh, Crystal and Steve know what the heck I'm talking about. Go ahead, friend, sorry. <laughs> what were we in the middle of? Uh, yeah, we were talking, I think we we're talking about uh, the, the motivations and the genesis of sort of the, the villainy that, uh, that are. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, once you've got your, your villain and you've kind of figured out what ways the heroes are going to get involved, uh, mm -hmm. next thing I like to look at are what unexpected complications are going to come up that the heroes didn't know or think about or the villains didn't think about. Mm -hmm. uh, the adventure power play is about this new syndicate strong arming their way into the city's underworld. They want to be like mob that runs all the mobs. And, you know, on their own, the PCs are only going to find out about this like midway through and won't know much about it. But there's criminals in the city who don't want somebody coming in and telling them what to do. So there's going to be criminals coming to the superheroes saying, mm -hmm. hey, help us out here. <laughs> or we'll help you out. Right. I love it. What a twist. Oh yeah. There's, there's a lot going on in chat. Like there's some, they're adding some story elements. One of them is uh, Alex Thomas. I think this is important to say me no want to be oatmeal raisin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's yeah, a very Steve good. Just pitched a, a, an adventure to me where the big complicating factor is crater apes. Yep. Crater apes. Yes. Yep, you're, you're in the middle of a pursuit trying to hunt down somebody who who has stolen something valuable from the, the what, Science Center? I can't remember what. Uh, yeah, Freedom and then, City uh, University. And, and in the middle of it, boom, crater apes. Yep. Yep. And things yeah. just get weird from there. You, from there, they get weird, yeah. Um, uh, this fighting is, like, oh, oh sorry. Just, you start out fighting Megalodon or Gowana mm -hmm. and then crater yep. apes. Yep. I, I think love it. In fact, the, the introduction to the adventure says that, you know, some, some adventures are grim explorations of, <laughs> you know, the human condition, and some are fighting animal people and ending up fighting apes and giant slime creatures on the moon. Yeah. You know. So Jonesy, I think he's asking, um, uh, in looking at this, um, knowing what the actual object was, I was just sort of reading the, the sentence and it was a little... Uh, I parsed it. Uh, I figured it out. Um, so uh, Jonesy wants to know about an update to a mastermind's manual. Um, and mm -hmm. if we see um, uh, an update in the future related to that and specific the second edition source book. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we're not really updating any of the second edition material. Not as such. Um, I mean, a lot, some stuff from mastermind's manual um, at least as far as the optional rules, found its way into Deluxe GMG, um, you know, and uh, some of the other stuff honestly probably works okay with third edition as it is, but... Yeah, um, a, lot of, a lot of the changes between second edition and third edition were just renaming things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we'll save some of the other updates uh, uh, specific to product-related things um, towards the end of the stream, because I... I, I 
feel uh, uh, bad when we kind of jump off uh, in the midst of a, um, a deep discussion on the subject <laughs> at hand. And so um, uh, hold on to those or remind me towards the end, and I will hope to get to them for sure. Um, and if anyone's got specific uh, adventure um, uh, sort of anecdotal information or resources or ideas that you've got to sort of tackle some of those issues as you create your own adventures and as you kind of see how Crystal and Steve put them together, yeah, drop those questions in uh, in the chat and we will um, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had to release Professor Adamant. Apparently, she's got diplomatic immunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, another uh, another but, escape. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, or, uh, foiled again. So I think that one of the interesting uh, notions, um, I think it was Aaron Alston who said it uh, about designing adventures is if you have, if it is not your first adventure that you're designing, one of the things that's worthwhile doing is just kind of looking back and saying, so what have the last few adventures been like or been mm -hmm. about? Um, and then saying, well, maybe it's time for a change of pace. You know, a lot of, I've been doing a lot of like magical villains or a lot of, you've been fighting a lot of like organized crime. You know, maybe it's time for something different. Uh, one of the great things about superhero games is their variety uh, yeah. and you can do so many different things. Sometimes it's just, you know, time to say, you know, hey, it's time for the characters to all go on vacation together and end up staying at a place that's haunted or where a murder happens or, you know, any number of other things. Or a beach episode. Yes, or a beach episode, you know. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, Joseph Saliano mentions um, uh, you're talking about sort of villainy and villains uh, in general, uh, uh, like like Destro from um, GI yeah. Joe. One of my favorite villains, actually, uh, just sort of <laughs> in the in the world of villainy. And it reminds me of going to getting a coffee at a local, you know, uh, cafeteria that we all see everywhere uh, across the world. And I, they said, well, "What is your name?" And I said, "It's Troy." And uh, the barista said, "Destroy." And I said. Uh, yes, destroy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> well, no, but that's a great point. One of the things I like to do in my home games is let players spend a hero point to activate the villain's complications, just mm. like the villains, oh. or just like the GM can bring their mm -hmm. complications in with a hero point. So like, if you that. want to have your star scream turn against whoever your, your Cobra commander is, uh, you can you spend a hero point and be like, this would be a great time for the, you know, tre treacherous mm -hmm. lackey to be like, ah, ha, 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 now in your moment of triumph. I love it. So I'm mean, going to uh, insert that. Alex uh, mentions that I think the best advice I ever got for superhero adventure design was uh, coming up with an excellent opening scene, a solid yeah. motivation, mm -hmm. and be willing to say yes or no, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to all the the. PC's ideas. Um, DT Sketch Pacino has a question. Um, <laughs> please do. D I guess that's my villain name now. I am Destroy. Destroy. You wouldn't be the first or the last. Um, so DT Sketch Pacino also says, uh, beyond what you've worked on, what are your favorite superhero adventures? Oh. Mm. <sighs> so was it i trying to remember what system this was for. I think it's Champions, mm -hmm. but it's a Knight of the Demons. Oh, yeah. Where, like, uh, like I, I can't remember. Wow, it's been 25 years since I read that. But the, mm -hmm. the basic idea is, like, the a supervillain magical group starts recruiting and gathering all the street gangs in the city and investing mm -hmm. them with demonic power. Oh, I yeah, like it. What, what cool. was that? What was that 70s show? Um, was it the Yeah, that 70s show. <laughs> yeah, that 70s show. <laughs> there is a that 70s show called that 70s show. But remember that gang? It was a Gangs of New York. Oh, I just remember when I was really young, I, I watched it. it. it where all yeah. the gangs sort of gathered together in a big sort of fight. Um, oh, what, the, the Warriors. The Warriors. Mm. That's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. So there you go. I, uh, leave it to me to bring up a cultural reference I can't remember mm -hmm. for Crystal to correct it. That is just one of the many mm -hmm. features of the Mutant Semester Men's Monday for yes. our... Hire me, and you too can have your cultural references correct. Right. <laughs> exactly. Validated, I would you. say. <laughs> 
Um, excellent. So, uh, real, uh, yeah, there's some really great advice. You know, that is, um, when you think about just very discreet, uh, like, a, like a, uh, basic kind of advice for folks a simple sort of measure of a thing what would you share uh, both of you yeah uh, i mean i think the best advice has already been shared it's have a good opening scene have a clear idea of who the villain is and what mm -hmm. they want and be ready to say yes to whatever weird schemes your players come up with yeah and that's yeah that's really. the heart of good game mastering yeah. whatever system you're going with yeah I mean, all the adventure true. design in the world isn't going to really change the fact that role play at its core is just about getting together with your friends and having a good goofy time or a good emotional time of some sort. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it. it. It's simple. It's simple. In that it's, you know, uh, and so does uh, our villain. Um, but it's uh, it. it it strikes me that sometimes you can be a little overwrought in the way that you like when I'm trying to solve a problem. Yeah design yourself into a corner um yep. that's yeah. very interesting sometimes the simplest stuff is the best stuff yeah you really don't need to overcomplicate things so far as that goes um and i think the other sort of best thing about uh that kind of approach is feel free to remember that the players don't know necessarily what you planned <laughs> And so feel free to revise. If a better idea presents itself during the game, run with it. Absolutely. You know, the, the, both, you know, just tell the players you planned it that way all along. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, see, it's really interesting. As you said that, um, uh, Sean, both of you sort of kind of came to this, you know, at the same time. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But players can stumble into a better adventure. Oh, yeah. All at the time. times. And, and that, the same that happens sort of in, in uh, online uh, MMOs and things is, you know, mm -hmm. as as a systems storyteller and, you know, you get in and you're, you know, you're acting as a character that, you know, is canon. And then you listen with the players and you're like, I like that better. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. That's a lot of mm -hmm. fun. Yep. And honestly, pay attention to when your players speculate wildly. Oh. about things because they will um you know because I, 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 they, right because either they will give you a better idea than you had in the first place um or sometimes they're just telling you things they wish would happen mm -hmm. you know wouldn't it be awesome if this thing happened <laughs> maybe it will <laughs> yeah that's really attention. smart pay attention to the villains they love to hate oh yes absolutely oh. If you can, if you can pull out a backdrop, the Leaper or a Stilt Man for your home campaign, put them in every other adventure. Yeah, they're gold. <laughs> even if it's just a warm-up scene. Yeah. Of... Even if they're just warding a jewelry store heist, and it's just like some PLH schmuck. I love it. Yeah, that is. This is resonating um, uh, with our friends in chat. <laughs> uh, but uh, Alex says, outsource the work to yeah. the players. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, Allie Randall Cram says yes. always pay attention to what the players say. Yeah, I mean, and also just the the subtext of why they're saying the thing, and you create mm -hmm. a moment that they'll just remember fondly forever. But and that's really the point of uh, of yeah. any of this. But that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, do we want to take a couple of minutes and talk about like how you design like fights for mutants or masterminds, and like Ooh. how to try and balance those? Because mm. yeah. it's not like we have a CR system. That's true. I mean, a lot of people kind of think the power level system is that, but it's yeah, not it's, really. It's kind of a rough guide, but it's very, very rough. Very rough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. like unofficially, like every two people of a power level you add or every doubling mm -hmm. of a power level. Eh. Yeah. Every doubling of the number of people of a power level adds about plus two to its effective take, power yeah. level. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like two power level uh, 10 heroes is about as buff as a power level 12 villain, kind mm -hmm. of, sort of. Yep. And like yep. four power level six minions is about a challenge for one PL 10 hero. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, assuming they aid and mm -hmm. aid and yeah. team attack and things like that. Well, and that's uh, partly because um, challenge rating systems are based on a, an approach that assumes um, the expenditure of resources, basically. Yeah. 
that you have a set number of hit points, that you have a set amount of you know, resources in terms of, of spell slots or power uses or whatever it is, um, and that those can be apportioned out in any given encounter. Um, and so therefore you can, you can essentially do the math of you know, how long is an average fight gonna last if characters are doing X amount of damage and all of that. Um, but Mutants and Masterminds is a lot swingier in its results. Your attacks can vary a lot in terms of the damage they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, characters don't have the same kind of limitations on their powers. They bounce back. And so attack generally in yeah. aren't as severe. You don't have to worry about building in rests and recovery time and those yeah, kinds of things. I mean, a PL10 hero who's vulnerable to fire is at a huge disadvantage to a PL8 villain who mm -hmm. uses fire. Yeah, so, absolutely. Or like absolutely. a PL10 psychic character is going to be completely useless against a mindless rock monster. So. And really it's, in terms of game balance, mm -hmm. the key thing I think you're looking for for a game like Mutants and Masterminds is really just avoiding anti-climax. Yeah. For the most part, uh, you you just want the to feel the you know a, a fight, especially a big you know like climatic fight, to feel like there are real stakes to it, um, and to feel like there's there's some real challenge to it that it's just not easy uh, for the characters to walk all over it. Yeah, for for intro fights at least, like you generally want one, maybe two supervillains and a bunch of minions. And mid-level mm -hmm. fights are a couple of supervillains and or minions. And then your end fight is generally making sure that the, the action economy favors your villains, but mm -hmm. also that your heroes have a ton of uh, hero points by then. Right. Yes. That's great. Um, you, you definitely struck a nerve. There are some people saying, what? You have to balance things? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to because the consequences to. for failure in Mutants and Masterminds aren't that huge. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of tabletop games, if you fail a fight, you die. And in Mutants and Masterminds, you're knocked unconscious. And right. maybe you get left behind because they're bank robbers and they don't want to cart some tights wearing carcass all over the city. Or maybe you're taken captive and locked in an easily escapable death trap or... And I, I have a, I suspect that our friend Jacob was being kind of funny, but uh, you know, Jacob, it's, it's it's time for us to sort of level up our game, and that's why you come and hang out with us on Mutants and Masterminds Monday. And it is, how can it be? I know we started a little bit late, which was Facebook's fault, not mine, uh, mm -hmm. this time. It's true. Uh, but um, what are some really important aspects of both the creation of adventures and and um, and the you know, I, I think you know, I keep thinking about. Do approaches to the way we create our Mutants and Masterminds adventures, does that change over time as the product develops? Does that have an influence oh, over yeah. sort of what we do? And uh, mm -hmm. maybe we kind of wrap on that and then dive into who won um, uh, our uh, uh, super noise fight while we were on our hero hiatus. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Um... Well, I mean, the rules have really changed what what heroes and villains can do. So, like, in the big shift between 2nd and 3rd edition, one of the biggest changes was no more save or, save or suck powers. Mm -hmm. So, like, mind control didn't go away, but it became, well, you're stunned for the round, or you're controlled, but you can't do a lot each round. And then if you fail your resistance check really badly, it became mm -hmm. you're completely under the villain's control. Yeah. So, I mean, that changes like how dangerous mind control villains are to the players versus, well, I mean, against NPCs, you can just say, well, they, they fail it and now they're mm -hmm. psychically controlled minions, but... Uh, but it changes how dangerous certain powers and certain encounters are to, to heroes. So now it's, mm -hmm. now it's a lot more fair to use, you know, trip or mind control or God, any of those powers that used yeah. to just- Snare and yeah. anything like that power, you know, anything that paralyzes or afflicts or anything yeah. like that. 
all those yeah. powers basically used to end an encounter with one fail mm -hmm. check. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so was, that's it was almost like Rocket Tag. If I remember my <laughs> yes. old second edition game. <laughs> I love this. This is uh, this is pretty this is pretty fascinating stuff. Um, uh, uh, folks with questions or thoughts, you know, um, this is a conversation as we always discover on our uh, when we hang out together. There are always so many different variables and aspects and things that we think about because of the questions you bring up and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. our opportunities to sort of uh, inspire you as you sort of think about building your adventures or how we do what we do. Um, we do have a, um, uh, a sort of a dangling obligation here specific to, um, you know, we took uh, we took last Monday off in uh, observance of Labor Day mm -hmm. and we put up a, um, you know, uh, in our uh, maybe I'll just show it real fast. We've got the technology. <laughs> We can do it, but um, the uh, the idea was, you know, heck, um, why don't you take a look at this and tell us what you think this super powered something? Schwip, I think is it. Schwip, does that sound good? Schwip, schwip. Okay, how would you do that again, Cheryl? Or Cheryl? I called you Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl, you're uh, you know, it's not even close. Crystal. I was trying to say Crystal and Schwip, so I called you Schwip, Errol. Um, what what was that noise again? Schwip, schwip. I think it might be a little higher. Is it more of a mm -hmm. whisper? I don't know. Um, but that being said, um, we've got some submissions, some ideas, mm -hmm. some really good ones, actually. Um, and <laughs> Pardon me. yeah, no worries. I'm with you there. Um, my question for the two of you is mm -hmm. I've got a, a, a little bit of a dilemma. One of our folks so the, the rules were you know to play noise fight uh mm -hmm. superhero noise fight but somebody came up with what they did instead is to just midst of our you know mm. of our canon and the thing about it, i was first i was like you know that didn't really follow the rules but isn't this whole thing that we're doing about sort of finding creative ways to expand the canon and <laughs> new experiences and so um, Jacob says, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 do. Um, Jake says, uh, Schwip is a specific type of fan fiction where both of the characters shipped are wielders of the whip, um, mm -hmm. which I like. So now, but I, I wasn't able to, in my research, identify character, you know, uh, any sort of villains or, or such with whips. And so I found that interesting. And then he clarified, he said, to be more precise, it's the sound effect that happens when Schwit becomes official headcanon. So <laughs> I was like, nice save, Jacob. Yeah, mm -hmm. or Jake. Um, I also, we you know an old friend of ours. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, John uh, says uh, Schwip is the name of a semi-transparent, semi-humanoid uh, cat person. Mm. Uh, let's see, uh, latest and last in a line of genetically engineered um, animals to serve, or uh, cats like people to serve as pets for the Farsighter royal family. When they still sway on the dark side of the moon, uh, Schwip currently resides on Earth as both pet and aide de camp of uh, to dispossessed royal exiles. Um, I love this. Named after the sound he makes when grooming his bright red fur, Schwip is preening and temperamental, but will f uh, fight fiercely on behalf of his mistress. That's a pretty solid one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I almost feel like that is coming from inside the house because, you know, Polish. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Um, let's see. Oh, um, the thing that's important, um, uh, I want to get to the end of this, uh, is that, uh, <laughs> in other words, those who catch his ire should beware Schwip's ginger tail. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I like, uh, I said a disposition that soothes even the most aggravated constitution. Indeed. I said a sparkling entry. Uh, let's see. Um, and then we'll read one more of these. Um, we do have a lot of people who have play, who are playing Super Noise Fight with Super <laughs> Noises, I, which I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. We'll go with this one. Um, 
Do, 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 do. Uh, Schwip is the sound made when the nefarious spritzer demonstrates his power. Once uh, um, the uh, unmotivated heir of a famous boxed wine fortune, <laughs> the humiliation he bore during parties with uh, other vineyard heirs finally drove him mad. Partaking in some of the forbidden formula, next-gen boxed wine, he gained the ability to turn fine wine into fruit punch. <laughs> Going by the name Spritzer, he struck back at his bullies, uh, turning their vast warehouses into near worthless kid strings uh, mm. with a refreshing schwip. <laughs> the horror. Um, oh. I know what They're mine better is. They're at this game than we are. They right? really are good at it. They're super good at it. Right? So uh, we've got some, uh, we've got some uh, names on the table, people who maybe chose to go a different way, but we like, you know, a little extemporaneous fun. But of those that I've read, what are you, where are you two landing? Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I like the potential sort of venokinesis potential of the the last character. You know, if they have the control over, you know, wine with very low specific gravity, you know, just has has to have very low alcohol content. Yeah, yeah. I, I also um, just like the boxed wine idea um, uh, because that is, you know, that flows like water here in the Hewitt household. So, <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't like a good cardboard dough? yeah yes exactly this is uh you know and i i did miss one here this is um this is important i i i feel bad that i miss it uh, uh it's almost like i uh am pretending as though i missed it but it really didn't schwip <laughs> is the t the telltale noise of an attack by the shied schwipper a Scottish supervillain who uses his extraordinary speed to knock into people and bowl them over, naturally played by Sean Connery in his Zed costume from Zardoz. Mm. That's a pretty solid <laughs> entry. It is. Uh, further Again, this is coming from inside the house. This is Alex Right, Thomas. that's Alex. Oh, see, they're paying attention. Dang it. I'm sorry, Alex. Alex. not every supervillain can be Sean Connery. Right? Well, for that matter, <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> no, they can all be Scottish. Mm. All right, they can all be Scottish. Okay, you heard that here. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, Alex. I was trying to slip in there and sort of <laughs> create some tension in some theater, but um, you know, unfortunately, our devs no, pay I... attention to what you say in yeah. the world. They're watching. They're engaging. <laughs> so couldn't um, get away with it. I think I've got to go with the vino kinesis. Right. Yeah. All right. Kind of. Right. Kind of say. I think Jason Childs has got it. All right, Jason, congratulations. Did I see Jason uh, posting in here earlier? Um, Jason, I'll send you a note. Uh, really, uh, thanks for uh, uh, hanging out and waiting for us. And um, thanks for having fun. We really enjoy uh, spending time and chatting with you. You always sort of uh, help us, you know, add some, uh, some further clarity and depth to the work that these two wonderful people do. Crystal and Steve, thanks for hanging out today. Pleasure. Thanks for having Ab us again. Absolutely. Um, we'll be back again next Monday in the interim. Um, you know, think of some good questions um, and uh, have some fun. And we'll close with <laughs> something about <laughs> heroes wearing masks. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Real heroes wear their masks. So yes. wear your masks, you little Please. jerks. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, Jason, you're very down. welcome. <laughs> yeah, we really are. Awesome. And also, you know, um, just not for nothing, but nobody cares what gender your baby is. Stop burning the world down. <laughs> right. God, right. It's at the very least, gosh. stop using fireworks. Absolutely. Plus, there's like, there's, there's still a margin for error well after, uh, well after the fourth trimester. I think it, let's take that into consideration. And also, you know, forest fires suck. Um, okay, we we're going to end on a positive note. We love you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, have a <laughs> wonderful week, and we will see you. We'll see you next time. Everybody, okay, take everybody. a hero point for tuning in. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs> and I'm trying, and I believe we are at. Um, all sure, right. Sure, sure. All right. You just thank want you. me to say 